All right, the Calgary Flames opening a three-game homestand here at the Scotiabank Saddledome against the Vegas School of the Knights. They wrap up the season series against the first-place Vegas club, and we welcome you to Game Over, brought to you by McDonald's. Brendan Parker alongside Corey Sarich. We knew the stakes entering tonight's game. They were high, 10 games remaining, and that playoff push continues. Uh, but it's the Knights that come away with a 3-2 win tonight. How did you see it go down here this evening? Well, I just thought the Vegas Gold Knights came out of the gate flying and uh, a couple of long stretch passes, a couple of plays in behind the Flames and they cashed in. They were uh, moving the puck well in the first period. Yeah, Jonathan Marcheseau, he gets his 23rd. Uh, Michael Amadio also scores in that first period. It was 2-0 Vegas, but here was the goal that brought back some life near the end of the first period. In fact, inside the final minute, Walker Dewar with a perfect pass. Milan Lucic with a perfect finish. His sixth of the season made it 2-1 and then some insurance for Vegas, but this didn't come till the third period. No scoring in the second, and then it was Nicholas Wally and tight makes that a 3-1 Yeah, game. a bit of a questionable goal here, too. Their hands in all over Rasmus Anderson. Can't yeah. make the play he wants. It's a turnover, and all of a sudden the puck's in the back of the net. Flames would uh, get within one one more time, and this is kind of a scramble drill on the power play. Nazem Kadri scores there. Uh, that's his 22nd of the season, and obviously huge at that point, but unfortunately not able to find the equalizer, and not for a lack of chances, and really not even for a lack of goals, just ones that counted, because uh, there was two called back of the Calgary Flames in this game, and then a couple of really glorious late looks as well. How did you see these no goals go down? Well, they, there was, they weren't having a lot of luck tonight with the yeah. calls, the Flames, but this is clearly pretty obvious. On being helped one. in with Manja's left foot. I yep. uh, think the look there on his face kind of tells the tale. And then a little bit of an odd play coming up here. Net gets dislodged. Flames are pressing. Goalie's gone to the bench because he knows that the net's dislodged. And obviously, puck goes in the net. Yep. It's not going to be counted. Yeah, and Logan Thompson was on it right away. Uh, he was obviously signaling to say that it was uh, the net was dislodged. However, uh, it would be talked about afterwards, reviewed, and uh, eventually kept that way as a 3-2 hockey game. This was the late chances, though. Andrew Mangiapane, Mackenzie Wieger, both with uh, really good looks. But Jonathan Quick forced to come into this hockey game in the final uh, really six minutes or so, uh, about uh, five and a half minutes, 5.53 but makes five stops, including those two there, that uh, ends up sealing this victory. But difficult position to come in, and obviously some huge saves there to close the game. Yeah, you don't usually see replacements that far into the third period. He's got to come in, there's an injury, and uh, he shut the door with a couple of really big saves and yeah. great traffic by the Calgary Flames. They threw everything at him. They had a heck of a last 10 minutes, just couldn't solve the goaltenders. And that uh, is the situation at hand for the Calgary Flames, who now have to sit and watch the out-of-town scoreboard as they look ahead to their next game right back here at the Scotiabank Saddledome against the San Jose Sharks on Saturday.